So let's have a look at those three ways of treating angina. We can block beta receptors, we can try to reduce calcium entry into the heart muscle, or we can add nitric oxide. Let's see what each of those do. So let's look at blocking beta receptors first of all. You'll remember that the, the heart is controlled by both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system serves to increase the force and the rate of the way the heart contracts. It also increases the automaticity. Automaticity is the, the tendency of heart muscle to contract automatically. So you can think of the sympathetic nervous system as being part of the fight or flight type of responses. So that helps to explain these effects up here. The parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest branch of the autonomic nervous system, decreases the rate. It doesn't affect the force, but it does also decrease automaticity. The heart receives in input from both the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. If we focus on the sympathetic nervous system, remember that there are, there are beta receptors on the heart which respond to the release of adrenaline and that increases the contractility of the heart. You can see this experimentally. Here's a control situation before you add any drugs. You can measure the tension in the heart, the heart muscle, and you can also measure the level of intracellular calcium. In the presence of isoprenaline, which is a beta, and beta agonist, so it's mimicking adrenaline, when we add isoprenaline, we get a much stronger contraction and a considerably bigger rise in intracellular calcium. So we want to stop this from happening because if the heart, if the heart's demand for oxygen is higher than the supply of oxygen, then you can decrease the demand by getting the heart to work less. So given that adrenaline makes the heart work more, we want to block this response. So we want to block beta receptors. To recapitulate what we did, uh, what you might already know, is that in a myocyte, so in the heart muscle, we have beta receptors, and adrenaline binds to these beta receptors. These are also known, beta is a type of adrenergic receptor. That's what we're seeing here. When it binds to the beta receptors, we get a release of cyclic AMP. So and that's through adenylate cyclase. In other words, these are second messenger receptors. This is a second messenger receptor coupled to a G protein. The G protein is activating adenylate cyclase and that's causing a rise in cyclic AMP. And then in the membrane, we have calcium channels. And the cyclic AMP phosphorylates them. So it adds a phosphate group to 
the calcium channels and that increases the probability of opening. So they open longer so you get more calcium coming in than you would normally get and that was because that affects the interaction of the myosin and actin filaments that means we get an increase in the force. 